Uh, I think that was just about the right amount of time. Um, unfortunately, um, some uh, misguided uh, souls um, back in Washington, D.C. Uh, decided to uh, induct me into the Academic All-America Hall of Fame so far the last uh, four days. I've been back in Washington, D.C. and in point of fact didn't get back to the West Coast until a late flight last night and um, uh, since every hit that I ever took in sports at the age of 76 has come back and hit me again. Yeah. Uh, I'm sore, I'm beaten up, uh, I'm tired, hungry, uh, hurting, uh, jet lagged, uh, and uh, unfortunately I didn't have time to prepare. Um, so this morning around nine o'clock I got up and tried to put something together uh, and uh, being the last speaker, of course, everything that needs to be said has already been said. I just haven't had a chance to say it. So uh, what I did was to kind of go back and look at um, my own uh, history and try to hook on to something that uh, would give me uh, entree into some words that I could, um, could say to you this morning that would be meaningful. Uh, I come from a race of people who were held in detention for over 250 yeah. years and whose babies were systematically ripped from their arms uh, and sold into slavery. And all of us who belong to that group bear the scars on our souls and our minds of that experience to this day. So it is not in a vacuum that I speak about the circumstances that we are confronted with today and what we must do, what our obligation is in terms of making sure that this situation will not prevail. We have the obligation to make sure that we move away from a society and a nation which cages babies and women and toddlers uh, under the uh, aegis of, um, uh, uh, of law and order, of safety and security. So I, starting from that premise, I want to talk to you just about a few things today to reiterate uh, some things that have already been said because they're so critically important. A great man once stated, we might not be able to resolve everything that we face, but nothing that we refuse to face can ever be resolved. And facing issues, facing the challenges of our nation today takes courage. As Maya Angelou once said, the greatest of all virtues are, is courage, because without it, no other virtue is possible. Today, and, 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 and you guys are going to have to slow down. I'm barely, I'm barely standing up here. You don't want to see me kill over. So uh, uh, just let me get through this, and I'm going to stick pretty close to my notes, because uh, I'm barely holding on here. Today, in far too many instances, too many of our fellow citizens are not driven by their hopes, their aspirations, and the promise of this great nation. Those things that have brought us thus far, they are driven by their fears. And now at long last, we as a nation have once again hit rock bottom. We have conflated families, children, mothers, toddlers, teenagers, babies, fleeing violence and open warfare, with gang members, murderers, rapists, and drug cartel smugglers. Today, we would, uh, we would be able to have a much more informed and enlightened discussion and debate about how to resolve our problems as a nation and as a society if we were not afraid, Most, mostly of each other. Fear and fear-mongering have become staples of our social and political life as a society. Everybody, it appears, is afraid of somebody. We are fed a constant diet of fear. Fear the left, fear the right, fear the immigrants, fear the liberals, fear the conservatives, fear the Republicans, fear the Democrats, fear the government, fear the fundamentalists, fear the secular humanists, fear the Muslims, fear the black youths in hoodies, fear the white men in cop uniforms, Fear the rich and their great wealth. Fear the poor and their demands for government services. Fear the banks. Fear the de those demanding health clinics and services for women. Fear the Tea Party agenda. Fear the gay agenda. Fear the homeless. Be whatever you want to be, but first, be afraid. Now, one can downplay 
Uh, no one can downplay or underestimate the seriousness or the difficulty of the challenge posed by thousands of immigrants and refugees massing on our borders. But we are smarter, better than to resort to separating families. We are better than losing track of 2,500 children and babies taken from their mothers, fathers, and adult companions with no plan or strategy for reuniting them. The nation that declared, send me your poor, your hungry, your masses yearning to be free is better than putting children, toddlers, and crying babies in wire cages. This is the land of the free and the home of the brave. This is, this is not the land of the frenzied uh, with fear and the home of the afraid. So once again, we're called upon to right the ship of state in accordance with that most consequential mandate put upon us as citizens of America. That mandate that states we the people in order to form a more perfect union. It doesn't say we the Congress, are we the governors, are we the courts, are we the legislators, and it most certainly doesn't in the hell say we the president. It says it is and has been from the outset the task of we the people to right the ship of state. But there is nothing new in this. It has always been we the people who stepped up and stepped in in difficult, even dangerous times to reaffirm and reestablish who we are as a people and what we must be as a society if we are to pursue the promise of uh, our nation. From the outset, the greatest advances toward achieving that more perfect union toward broadening the foundations of democratic participation in American society, toward realizing the promise of that shining city on the hill, representative of the freedom and justice that is America's destiny, have been forged by we the people. When they threw 342 cases of tea into Boston Harbor, old Sam Adams and his Sons of Liberty movement weren't operating under a British government program. That was we, the people. The abolitionist movement was we, the people. The government didn't start that. The labor movement was we, the people. The women's suffrage movement was we, the people. The civil rights movement was we, the people. The environmental movement was we, the people. The gay rights movement was we, the people. And yes, Black Lives Matter and the Me Too and the Parkland Voter Move Registration Movement were all, are all we the people. All statements, all statements forged by we the people stepping up and speaking out about issues and challenges that would otherwise, otherwise be played down, denied or simply ignored by the government. And so, we have been here before, and always in times of fear and fear-mongering, times of doubt, times of danger, times uh, of challenge concerning who we are as a people, what we are as a society, and where we should be headed as a nation. It has been we, the people, who have stepped up and made the difference. And each time, we, the people, have stepped up and not only prevailed, not only picked up the pieces afterwards, but we have come out of these crises better. So don't lose faith in where we are going and how we're gonna get there and what the end result are going, is gonna be. We went through a civil war that killed more Americans than all of the other wars we've been involved in combined, and we came out of it better. We went through a bloody labor struggle in the midst of a deep depression, but we came out of it better. We went through a civil rights struggle that between the turn of the 20th century and the death of Dr. Martin Luther King took three times as many American lives as a 9-11 terrorist attack, but we came out of it better. We are not only going to surmount this travesty of justice manifest in separating families and putting mothers, children, toddlers, and nursing babies in wire cages to sleep on bare, cold, concrete floors. We're going to come out of it better 
because that's what we the people do. So keep the faith in our institutions. I don't care how much they are derided uh, by some moron in high office. Keep faith in our traditions, in that deeply rooted sense of fundamental decency that is built into our character as a people and into our culture and fabric as a nation. And one last thing, the difference between a mob and a movement is follow through. Get organized, get mobilized, get people registered, get people to the polls to vote. In 2016, 93 million voters, uh, registered uh, people who were eligible to vote, did not bother to go to the polls, which was a major factor in the development of the mess we are confronted with today. So do not stop talking to and talking with those who might disagree with you, who might be apathetic, who might be uh, disinclined to fulfill their duties as we, the people, who support caging, who might even support caging babies and toddlers under the roofs of law and order, of securing and protecting our borders from terrorists under the roofs of keeping out drug cartels, gang members, and other criminals. We can't afford to write anybody off, irrespective of the reasons, the justification that those 93 million people might use. We have got to get to them and let them know about what we are motivated by. We know that a lot of their motivation is fear and apathy. But we need to continually remind them of what our motivation is. So don't hesitate to go online and download every photo, every video, every audio recording of babies in cages, of toddlers crying while their mothers are being hand searched at the border, and hook them, hook those uh, that download up to your TV in a continuous loop. And if you don't know how to do this, just go out in your neighborhood and find a third or fourth grader. They'll hook it up for you. They'll get it done. Then bring in all of your family all of your friends, all of your neighbors who are afraid, who are confused, who are apathetic, who might even disagree with you, and sit them down in front of the TV set. Then explain your motivation for vehemently opposing these travesties of justice that end up with toddlers and babies and mothers in wire cages on cold concrete floors under Cavalar 10 aluminum blankets. Stand behind them as they are seated in front of your TV set and that endless loop is running and begin to read in a loud voice. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal and are endowed by their creators with certain inalienable rights. Among them, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among people deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of we the people to alter or to abolish it and institute a new government that is more in, in such form as to them shall most likely affect us, their safety and happiness. This is what motivates us. We're not motivated by fear. We're motivated by that document that starts with we the people in order to form a more perfect union. And we're motivated by that document that states that we the people have the right to protest, to demonstrate, and to change a government that is not reflective of our needs, our interests, our values, and our priorities. Uh, Keep the faith, continue to struggle, and never, ever, ever give up on this great nation or its institutions or its values. That's the difference between us and Russia, between us and North Korea, between us and a bunch of other places that some people seem to admire and aspire to institute. They're going to find out they made one fatal uh, miscalculation. 
they made one egregious blunder, and that is failing to uh, consider uh, the reality that we, the people, are not Russians. We're not North Koreans. Thank you very much.